Hello everyone, no response here. Hope you're doing well and having a grand week. So I'm quite excited to bring you the first of what I hope are many kit bashing videos. As you can see, I've got lots of bits and pieces, all very good fun in front of you now. And hopefully I'm gonna make it not too long, kind of make it swift-ish as I can. Uh, but I'm gonna be kit bashing uh, a model in each video, kind of showing you how I make my Necromunda model specifically, but also other games as well, and just kind of having fun and just kind of making cool things. So in this video, I'm gonna be making uh, my leader for my Gene Stealer Colts. So my Gene Stealer Colts, if I can find one of my cooler ones, are these guys here. So for those of you who aren't familiar with kit bashing, what kit bashing is, is where you mix and match different kits, uh, usually within Games Workshop, but often Necromunda seems to be one of the, the main kit bashed uh, games currently going, and you basically make something quite cool. So this uses three kits. It uses the legs are from the Gene Stealer Cultist kit. Uh, the torsos here are from the Cordor kit, and then the back here is from the Skitari set with some Gene Stealer Cultist bits accessories. And then I have made the hoods out of modeling putty. So it's it's good, it's good fun, and I quite like it. For those who've never played Necromunda before, I highly recommend the game. It's a skirmish level game, so what that means is rather than having full armies, you have um kind of a few guys. So for example, I've made five of my Gene Stealer cultists. And they're quite cool. And they'll all be named. They'll all have their own characteristic sheets. I'll have equipped them myself, so I have a kind of credits, just like a thousand credits to buy and equip the gang. So they're all really personalised, and that's why you're kind of encouraged in a lot of ways to make these kind of conversions, because you really make them your own. Oh, where's the other one? There he is. So for this big boy here, uh, is got three arms and a mining laser. So it's good fun. You may notice, like, the I, I really like the look of Kit Bash models as well before they're painted, because you can really see, like, the actual work I've done on this. And it's, it's just good fun. And you make some pretty cool things. Um, I'm completely addicted to Kit Bashing. Uh, so what we're going to do in this video is we do my leader. So I've already chopped up most of the models. And I've done a little bit of gluing, because some of it was, um, well, I need to decide what I was actually going to put on him. But effectively, he's going to, this will be a bit more simple one, which is why it shouldn't take too long. Um, a good kind of first video, uh, because it's going to be using the Cordor leader body, but then he's going to have different weapons. He's going to have a head with a modelled hood, um, which is cool. So let's just jump straight into it. So the weapons I'm using is, he's going to have a flamer from the Delac upgrade kit from Forge World. So one thing with my Gene Stealer Cultists is I didn't want them, even though they're using Cordor bodies, because I want them to look kind of quite religious fanatics, which is it's what Gene Stealer Cults are, but a bit more so, because my leader's going to be, um, a, they're led by a kind of charismatic psyker. Um, but I still wanted their weapons to be reasonably solid tech, because um, the Cordor weapons, if you see, if I've actually got a flamer somewhere around here. Yeah, there we go. So this is a flame pistol. And as you can see, the Cordor weapons are deliberately, like, ramshackle. They're, like, held together with, you know, ribbons and tape and shit. Whereas these weapons are still quite reasonably high tech. They're just kind of in kind of robes and st stuff. So first, I'm going to tidy up this because I've not actually... His arm's a bit messy. It's got some uh, green stuff on there. Yeah, originally, um, I was going to put this right from the start, like, build, like, just, you know, taking the models out the sprue. But one, um, I changed halfway through what he was equipped with, and two, that was taking a bit longer. Uh, I'm going to try and keep these videos kind of under, kind of around the 20-ish minute mark, if I can, if not a bit under, because that way you kind of get an idea of what I'm making without me kind of, because kit bashing can take ages. Um, normally, I, what I do is I'll do this while I'm watching, like, an episode or something. So recently Buffy, and it will literally take like an entire episode, and I don't really want to do kind of an hour video of me just kind of, because I change my mind a lot with kit bashing as well, which is another issue. Like this guy, for example, was going to have his weapons done in a much different way than what they're done now. Um, right, so firstly, let's file that down. So yeah, the, um, oop, got a bit of modelling party stuck on this one. A bit of blue stuff right at the end there, you see it. <laughs> um... So modeling parts. What I mean, what tools am I using? So I'm using currently uh, pretty much Games Workshop mostly. So these are the uh, the Citadel clippers. This is my most used tool. They're really rugged as well. I can just scrape all that nonsense off the end. I'm using a wee saw. Um, again, Citadel. Just because I went to Games Workshop and just picked them all up. I'm using a craft knife. I don't actually use it for cutting. I usually just use it for fine modeling work. Um, and then I've also got a 
uh, kind of an angle chisel, extra firm clay, was it clay shaper, which is this basic silicon. Ooh, focus has been a bit weird there. That silicon tool, which uh, there we go, seems to like that corner over there quite a bit, um, is a silicon tool for um, kind of modeling, modeling putty. And the actual modeling putty itself is this two part blue and yellow stuff called green stuff. Um, I got mine from a place called Goblin Gaming, highly recommend it uh, because it's a reseller, so you get things for cheaper. And Goblin Gaming specifically are just, they're really nice. They're based up in Norwich. Um, obviously, if you're in the UK, you can get it from there. If not, um, you'll have to do somewhere local. And um, they're just really good. And we're using some Loctite super glue. So there we go. Right, and I've got a little bit. Um, God damn it, it's a bit of it's fucking nonsense. I need to clip a little bit here. Off. Spacey, I already tried gluing his hand on and I changed my mind. I was like, I'm going to record this. Sorry, apologies in advance if I occasionally forget that I'm not actually showing you what I'm doing. I'll usually correct myself quite quickly, but I might accidentally, uh, accidentally forget. <laughs> Especially if I get into it. It's kind of a practice skill, knowing, knowing where the, uh, where the camera's pointing. And don't worry about all the stuff I'm getting over my hands, it happens. You know what I mean? I'll just wash them after this. I'll be like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so I got pleased with how this turns out, like, in terms of my plan for this guy. Because originally, I was really racking my brain on how I can get a good-looking flamer, because I wanted him to have a flamer, rather than a hand flamer. Um, just happens to be, initially, he was going to holding, the, he was going to hold the flamer, like, down here, like this. But the problem is that I couldn't have a flamer that was being held in that hand, and I didn't want to risk cutting these up too much because they're really, they're they're really, you have to order them from Forge World, which means they're more expensive than the standard ones. Um, and so it was a bit of a bit of a thing. But then I realised I could just put it in this hand, and he could hold something else. So he's kind of aiming it up in the air. So my leader is gonna be um, I'm quite excited for the list I built with these guys. Look at that, he's gonna be like freaking. Yeah, um, my leader is going to be a Psyker, so he's going to have Psychic powers. I've used, uh, GTC the Cultists get two uh, different types of leader. You get an Adept and an Alpha. So an Alpha is what most of my friends seem to be using, which is, I might actually, one second, have it so it's more pointing that way. One second, because I want it so you can see it when you look directly on him. It's just, there's a weird lump there. Boop. There we go. Um, an Alpha is what my friends tend to use, so yes, he'll hold it like so it's more, can you see the other side? Um, so basically, an alpha is more like your kind of standard champion kind of character, like really good in combat. Like my friend had a guy called what was it? Um, Abraham Crass. It's a really good name, uh, and he um, famously murdered my Goliath, like two of my Goliath champions. Like not like murdered, murdered, them, but just like kicked their asses with a chain blade in the last campaign. In not the last campaign, the one before, and they're so good. But they're kind of not boring. But it's just like it's just a standard champion. That are just particularly tough because they have like three arms. What I wanted was something a bit weirder, and mainly because I was going for the whole kind of like more religious side of the Gene Stealer cult. Push it down a little bit more. Yeah, they're perfect. So I'm going to the more religious side of the Gene Stealer cult. So I wanted um, an adept. Now, an adept isn't very good in combat at all, but they can take a psychic power. So this guy, um, who I've got his head around here somewhere. He's going to have a gas-masked head. Ooh. That one. Uh, this guy is an adept, and he's going to have to start with the mind control power, which I'm really excited about, because uh, mm -hmm. that means he can basically like mind control someone, and they don't even get a defense to it. It's just within his win within nine inches, he can just force you to... Um, I need to find which sprues I'm having for the actual one now. Um, he can just force you to make one shooting attack on one of your comrades, which, as you can imagine, um, shenanigans afoot. Uh, so before I do, while I decide on what his um, his actual weapon is going to be in his other hand, I'm going to put his backpack on. This should be a quite quick one, actually. because um, So basically, the reason why this is going to be quite quick is because I don't need to redo his legs at all. So these ones use the Gene Stealer Cultist legs and the Cordor body. But you may notice, if you look at the side of that foot, it's actually the same style. It's a hazard suit, basically. So that's why he doesn't need to do a leg shop. And I really like his stance. It's such a cool stance. So it, it's quite... It's an easy first video, effectively. It was, a, was, was the, the vibe of this one. But he's also the most important model. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm quite excited. Because um, in my Necromunda campaign, it's about ten of us, usually. 
Sometimes it goes up to a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less. And we're all at that stage now. So I'm gonna make sure you can see me what I'm clipping out. We're all at that stage now. We're kind of like more going for like the fun weird stuff rather than necessarily, you know, optimize the meta. And so we, we, we like our we like our weird shenanigans, basically. Uh, case in point today, um, Oh, it's not, that's the wrong one. I don't want that one. I want, one, want, want that one. Um, I played my friend and I did a sneak attack on him and I was using falsehoods to kind of sneak ahead. I turned the lights out. Um, we did it with a draw. It was, it was just weird shit. And then, like, I used my guild uh, ally, which we, we had, um, we'd allowed them to take drugs, which normally is a bit grey on whether you can. So I gave this kind of, like, posh noble lady loads of combat drugs and she just murdered everyone with digi weapons and stiletto knives it was great fun it's great fun but also like things like psychic powers being able to get someone to shoot all their mates which is gonna i, I imagine well this thing that people won't expect which I'm, I'm always for so they're gonna have these backpacks like this but the reason why i want this backpack is he's also gonna have um it mounted on the back there because i want him to have a a, uh, what's a cult icon it's called. So I'm gonna clip, oh God, I keep forgetting to show you what I'm actually doing. Apologies, apologies, apologies. I might do that quite often because I've got a, you know what I could do? I could just use the camera. The camera's in front of me, basically. Okay, so let's sell that down. Oopsie. Um, I might drop things as well all the time. I'm, I'm quite notorious for dropping things on the floor. I mean, notorious because none of you know about it, but you do now. Um, I'm, always dropping these small bits on the floor because I have like this kind of black rug um, you can imagine how long that takes to find anything <laughs> it's a bloody nightmare is what it is so I was going to pop it in there and just sort of shove it I could, sorry, I was going to pop it in there but I might just take the light off but I want it sort of centred but it might look a little bit wank if I do it like that um, let's put the backpack on first actually um, and then I'll decide how it's going to look because basically, he can have an item, well, everyone can have an item, but they, they have an item called a cult icon, which is like a, you know, the icon of your cult, obviously. Um, and I want him to, why well, my leader to have it, because that way, in the rules, what it means is you can just activate one other person with him. And because your leader can activate already two people, it means he can activate six people, which is obviously, uh, not six people, fuck it up, maths, David, three, six, where did you die? <laughs> three people, which means including himself, which you can activate four of them at the same time, which is obviously very, very good for kind of like, you know, coordinated twattery, um, which is basically what it is. Maybe I should have... Oh, let's stop my fingers together. <laughs> Live on camera, as you do. So it's just such a simple thing. Kit bashing is great, because you just end up making like these absolutely thematically wonderful models. I'm going to put his head on now, actually. Just so it looks cool. Um, these are the, uh, the upgrade kit heads, so they're not the actual ones, so this come in, where is it? I've got a sprue somewhere, there it is. This comes in this set here. Now, the thing with the upgrade kit heads is they're, um, they're meant to be used on guardsmen rather than the actual official Genes of the Cult bodies, which means they don't have much thick, we don't have, they don't have thick necks, basically. So you have to use green stuff to, <laughs> otherwise that. god damn it, come here you. See how I told you about dropping shit? Get in. Dude, get in there. Thank you, dear. Thank you, love. Love you. Where's your, um, where's my modeling party? Tool gone. Have I dropped my tool already? There it is. I'll do that a lot. It's fine. It isn't. It's really annoying, but, I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? Just a bit more. Oh, he looks so cool already. Just, just that stance. I love this corridor model so much. It's so, um... I don't know, almost demented, I love it, it's just so, such a weird and strange position, it just makes me happy. Oopsie. And um, one thing I'm doing, so I'm, um, Genes of the Cult is all armed with hazard suits, except technically the Adept, I have to buy his, because you have to buy, he doesn't actually start with armor, but he's gonna have hazard suit. But all of these guys start with them. And hazard suits, the way they work in the rules is, um, you get 6 plus save, which is shit, but you're immune to... Blaze, which has been caught on fire, and you're immune to, look at that, gorgeous, um, you're immune to Radphage, which no one really uses, however I'm going to use Radphage, because I'm going to buy irradiated bullets for my ore guns, but anyway, but also, if you mix it with a respirator, 
you get almost, you're almost immune to gas weapons, and, and a few people have gas weapons in my campaign, so it should be good. Now, I might not actually end up giving him the cult icon, but I might just glue it on somewhere. Um, so we need to give him another hand. So I've got my sprues. Let me just have a gander on the thing. I might just give him a knife, to be honest, for the sake of... Um, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll give him this. I'll give him this, because I quite like the way this one looks. I'll give him that. I've actually got an idea. I've got an idea, everyone. Because I was going to do this. So I want him to have an occult icon, right? That's a really cool looking weapon. Ah! Occult icon. Now what I could do, right, is cut that off and glue that one on there instead. Do you think that? Do you think that'll look good? Do you like that? Do you, li do you like that? I like that. I think that'll look cool. So I'll be holding that there like that. Oopsie. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let, let's do what I've decided. Right, I've got two of these anyway, so if I, I screw it up, I can get a second one. It's fine. So we're going to... Because it's got that nice little mount as well, which is, is what I'm kind of focused on. So we're going to, unfortunately, take off the cool thing. See, one thing that scares people about kit bashing is you have to do this. You have to look at a cool model and think, right, cool. I'm going to cut this up now. And obviously, if you're not... One, it's expensive, obviously. But also, if you're not confident with it, you can kind of... You know, you can be too afraid to try it, but I'd really recommend it because it is so fun. And it makes for much more rewarding and satisfying models. I I've only just started really kit bashing, so it's not as if something I've been doing for ages. Um, like, all of my Necromunda gangs aren't kit bashed at all, other than, like, my... My Psyker is for my Delac, which I'm... My... No, I showed you in the last video, I went back... and I don't know where it is anyway. He's around here somewhere. But it is rewarding, because you end up with a character, like, has, look, I mean, for example. Look at the personality in this lad right here. Look at him. Look, look how happy he looks with that Weber. He's, oh, I love it. Love it so much. And then look how badass this guy looks. He doesn't take shit, son. Oh, I love it. Love it so much. Love Necromunda. Love Gene Steeler Colts. And love kit bashing. Um, the next video, I don't know which one I'm going to be doing. But I've got plans to make a sniper, though I might make that one outside the video. Um, I've also got an aberrant, which is kind of like this big mutant thing. Um, and then I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to clip that one out there. So I clip that one. And then I file that down, and that'll be the perfect mount. I love, I love, one thing I like about kit bashing as well is you just kind of make shit up as you go along. Yeah, so I'm going to have an aberrant, which he'll be, I'll probably do him some my life, just because, um, He's going to involve lots of nonsense. Yeah. Also, I have to make sure it's the right way around there. Look at that. That is going to be perfect. Gorgeous. So it's going to count. Uh, so basically, the, the cult icon is just a thing they're carrying. But I'm also going to give him like a maybe like a power pick or something. And the power pick, because it, it doesn't say where the cult icon is. So you can pretend it's like attached to your gun or something like that. So that's sort of what I'm going to do with this. His cult icon is going to be his melee weapon. Even though shit in combat. But it's, you know, thematic. I'm glad he's got a flamer now. That's cool. See, the thing is with this guy, he's bad at shooting, right? Well, he's, he's not bad at shooting. He's mediocre at shooting, which is effectively bad in Necromunda because everyone's either good or... That looks fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Looks weird, but in a good way. Um, it's gonna look like that, basically. Yeah, and yeah, I still haven't done this hood yet. How long have we got? We've done, oh, only about 18 minutes. It's fine, I should keep this under 30, which was my plan. Um, actually, my plan was under 20, but that's not gonna happen. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, what was I saying? So basically, I'm thinking of maybe making this like a power pick or something, or some kind of power maul. Might be a good one. So just like buy him a power meal after the next game. Ah, look at that. See what I mean? Oh, but you see what the modeling party as well. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh, my liege. But the thing is, so he's, he's a mediocre character. He's not very good at shooting, which is why I've given him the flamer. Because flamers automatically hit, so he doesn't need to be good at shooting. And because he needs to be within nine inches to use his psychic power anyway, it just seemed like the good choice. Um, so, for example, I'm going to give him, and because I can give him the better war gear, I can, you know, he can start with a flamer, which is cuts. Oh, my God, that looks so good. Oh, it looks so good. I love it when I just do this shit on the site. Um, right, anyway, okay, let's do his hood, and then he is done. 
sweet. Um, yeah, really pleased with it. What I love and what's making me so happy with these is um, I uh, I bought all these parts um, like this payday, so like a couple of weeks ago, and I had an idea of how I wanted them to look, which is the hoods, the corridor bits, and and the kind of the mixing in the cool guns. And I had no idea if it would work or not. I am so utterly pleased that it has worked out. Um, right now, this part is fiddly. So what I'm doing, sorry, I should show you what I'm doing. Looking at my hands, not looking at what I'm recording, is I'm using green stuff, right? Now, this is where it gets fun. Don't panic. Because this is the part that always looks like I'm going to mess up, but it's not. It's actually really easy. And the good thing is, because it takes ages to dry, you do have quite a kind of... Like, it, it, I mean, it takes hours to dry. You can you can model it for ages. Now, green stuff sticks. You just stick into my hands. We've got this big tub of water over here. My, um... Big tub of water. Which is my paint pot, and it's really minkin. Minkin? My, minion. That's the word. Word's not working. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to get that wet. And the reason why I'm going to get that wet is because the second you get it wet, it doesn't stick to anything for a bit. And then I can, uh... Then get this. Boop. And I can chop this down. The hoods are really easy. You just do it in layers and then you slowly kind of model them in. You'll, you'll see what I mean. It'll look grand. It'll look great. Oh, this model looks so good! Fucking loving it so much. Um, but I'm not allowing myself... So these guys... So this campaign's going to start like sometime next year. Probably like January, February-ish. So I'm taking a long time on these guys, right? Um, so for example, they're all going to have nameplates. Nameplates are the, the plates written on their bases. Um, and they're going to be fully painted. I'm also going to do all the allies as well. So I'm going to fully model the entire gang plus reinforcements. So it looks weird, but don't don't worry. Yeah? <laughs> Trust in Davy. Right, so this is where we have to... Pay attention. The good thing is, is you really do... Um, where's the knife? Actually, that's probably going to be a bit easier in this part. You really do have... His hand might fall off, just the record, but I'll just put it back on. You do get way more time than you realise. I mean, like, literally, I, I, I'm just doing this. It takes You can do it for ages, like a good half an hour of you just taking bits off and putting them back on again. So don't really worry about it. But green stuff is the thing that really is just about confidence. It's just like, yeah, okay, cool. You do it in layers, right? And it takes a while to get in the right position, as you can see. But once you've got the first one in, it tends to get a little bit easier. <laughs> Come on, just get on there, you bastard. Ah, oh, sticking to my fingers already. Stop sticking to my fingers, you dickhead. Stick to the model. There we go, cool. Sweet. So. I'm not too bothered about... You see it's warping a little bit? Don't worry about that, because it's really easy to get it back out. I'm just trying to make sure it's kind of in there and secure. Before I worry about... I'm making sure you can see what I'm doing. Before I worry about getting it... <sighs> Too much. Actually, that one might have to go up a little bit. Nah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. It's fun, because it's way easier than you'd expect. The cool thing about this, right, is you think, oh, you're not going to fit all of that modelling party in there, because it's going to bulge. But then you remember that he's it's quite deep in there. See, it's already starting, you can see it. It's so easy to do. Ah, oh, yes. Love it! And I'm really pleased with the choice of gas mass in this. So one thing... Oh, that, that hand's just going to fall off in a sec. I'll just re-glue it on. It's fine. Um, one thing about these guys is I'm one of those people, I always make sure that my guys visibly have what they're equipped with. So if they've got gas mask, they have to have it. Even if it's on their belt or something, they have to be holding a gas mask. Grenade, same thing as well. I'm just a bit OCD like that. So that means I basically spent like eight quid the other day ordering... Oh, well, actually more, it's about 11 quid because I had to get postage. Just ordering this upgrade kit. Just for the heads. Um, oh, look Look at him already. Oh, look at it. Look at the perfect position. Oh, love the hood. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Fucking love it. Love it when shit works out. <laughs> um, awesome. Right, so we've nearly done... Uh, this one actually went re... I'm get, I've done about five of these already, so I'm sort of slightly getting better at doing it now. 
Uh, so we're just going to do the back now. So he's, um, erp, just reach my arm around to get the pot of water, which I could move closer, but that would involve, you know, cognitive effort. Um, I really like his gang relic as well. Sweet. That was unexpected. I basically decided how to do that gland relic just like literally just before I started recording because uh, my initial idea of using like a pole arm just looked really shit. And there is one where you can have it where it's up in the air like in, in that hand, but I needed that hand for the flamer, so. Okay, so I have to do the back of the head as well. Come on. There we go, there we go. Bosh. These silicon tools, by the way, like these things are really handy. Um, I got mine in a place called, I think it's called Great Art in Shoreditch. So basically it's just your standard kind of arts, like kind of one of those bigger arts and crafts shops. Um, and they're really, really good. Um, a good modeling tool is handy and then a small craft nice to do kind of like the fine, fine bits. And you're kind of solid. Yeah, no, this one's a much... And don't worry about, like, Scrimble, I'm probably going to warp his hood again accidentally in this, but it doesn't matter, because as you saw a second ago, it's quite easy for me to just kind of move it back out. So what we're doing now is just focusing more on making sure that it's blended and doesn't look weird. And once this dries as well, then I can use my fine, uh, my file, and just go over the head like this thing, and just go over the head and just kind of file it down and smooth it out to the point where, once I painted it, it'll just look like, you know, Standard hood material, <laughs> whatever you decide your hood wants to be out, made out of. See, already I'm like warping the front, doesn't matter at all. Not important at this juncture. Because it's mostly about making sure that these bits are blended and in. Yeah, his hand's just being a bit weird. Right, cool. So let's just scrape that part off there. Not cut my finger open. I've yet to do that. Touch wood. And I'm surprisingly um, lax <laughs> with my safety. Okay, so get that in there. Ah, oh, this looks so good. Yeah, sweet. Though it doesn't mean I have to move my points around because initially my list had him as a hand flamer, and I was like, no. So a hand flamer is is, is is effectively the same stats as a flamer. So it's same range. Same ammo roll, but it has a strength 3 rather than a strength 4. So what that means is, is most enemies you'll be wounding on a 4, 5, 6 rather than a flamer, which will wound things on a 3, 4 and a uh, 3, 4, 5, 6. So obviously like that, that extra, you know, it's it's wounding them on a, a 2 out of 3 with the flamer versus um, kind of 50-50 chance with the hand flamer. And um, yeah, flamers are much better. So Nishi was going to have a hand flamer, which is also like more cheaper it's 50 credits versus 100 credits however he's the boss man and needs his needs his good flamer doesn't he plus i want him to rack up xp because obviously what i'm gonna do, my plan with this guy is to pretty much rarely put any points any xp into his stats and just keep getting him new skills and psychic powers at least i want him at least one more oh that little hood looks great though look at that um i just want to i've nearly done basically um I'm going to tighten that hand in a bit because it's obviously waggling around as you can see. And gorgeous. So that looks incredible. I'm just going to quickly uh, glue that back on. And how long have we done? Oh, uh, yeah, just, so just around 30-ish minutes, which is fine. Where's my thing gone? There it is. I did save a little bit of time. Normally this takes, basically, to kitbash one model usually takes me about an hour. Roughly. Maybe an hour and a half, because I kind of, you know, take my time and I'm deciding. With this one, it's a bit quicker because I knew what I was doing. Um, I had, like, my plan in my head. Voila! So there you go. That is a very simply, I mean, simply but satisfying kit-bashed Mardo. So this is the leader of my Gene Steel Occultists. He has what is going to be possibly a power pick or a power mall, um, which is also his cult icon, because the cult icon can be glued to anything. Uh, he's got a flamer uh, from the Delac upgrade kit. He has 
a um, Skatari backpack, because all of my guys have Skatari backpacks. He will eventually, but not in this video because I don't have any left. Probably have one of the knives from this upgrade crit and possibly some grenades. But I don't, I've ran out of I've ran out of them, so he doesn't have that. But it's very simple. And as you see the way I did with the hood, it's it's really, really straightforward. There's a few like lumps on his hood but what i'll do is once he's dried off i will just use an um a file and just file that down but that'll obviously take about i'll probably do it when i get home from work tomorrow but anyway yeah so this is the first one i'm really really pleased with how this guy turned out uh, it's really simple to do so what i'm doing is i'll do another one uh it'll definitely be another member of my gene stealer cult it'll probably be these will be semi-ish regular uh at least once a month kind of thing for me because obviously it'll be when i've got the models available so it'll be dependent on what i'm spending money on uh so for example for my jeans to the cultist now i probably have to wait until payday because i'm gonna have to buy an aberrant and a few bits for the sniper but uh, potentially what i might do is maybe build because i've got one i've got one guy with a shotgun and one guy with an auto gun so i might model those and record those as well but i won't model the entire gang live just because that will take ages and it's distracting for me um, and i want to show you new and cool things but anyway yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that uh, let me know what you think um if you like these videos um i quite like making them so it's just hopefully you enjoy it as well um obviously i'm always going to improve with how they're presented currently right now i'm using my mobile phone camera i do have a dslr over there on my bed but i couldn't figure out how to work the damn thing uh, it's one i got from work so um i will practice with that uh, but until that point uh, um we'll settle with my my phone camera which is pretty grand anyway um i will have more videos up soon so i've got the plan the plan a plan of doing at least one um the outer worlds video it might be up next week i basically want to finish the game first so i can give it a proper hearing because i've got some like not criticisms, but I've got some things how I want it to change. Uh, so that'll be up at some point. Um, I'm also going to continue doing at least one more video on uh, Moons of Madness. So that's a kind of cool horror game I was playing. So I want to kind of pick that back up again. As well as more Fallout videos and all things in between. But anyway, you guys enjoy the rest of your week. As always, follow me on Twitter at no response. Follow me on Instagram at no response if you want to see more of my kit bashing and kind of when these when these guys are actually painted as well and kind of up other updates on my kind of tabletop stuff. And I will talk to you lovely people soon. You take care.